Today on Variant, I talk about a character that I've wanted to talk about for a while now, Icon. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I want DC Comics to start utilizing the milestone characters way more. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. For today's episode, I wanted to talk about a character that not many people know much about, Icon. He's an incredibly cool, complex, and powerful character. So powerful, in fact, that he can hold his own against Superman, but I'll get into that later. Anyway, my point is, he deserves more spotlight. So I wanted to put him front and center, giving him his own episode. That way, you could all learn about this awesome character. Icon was originally created under Milestone Comics and made his first appearance in Icon Issue 1 in May of 1993. For those of you not familiar with Milestone, Milestone Media was founded in 93 by several African American writers and artists such as Dennis Cowan, Michael Davis, Derek T. Diggle, and Dwayne McDuffie. They created the company as they believed minorities were underrepresented in comic books, so Milestone was a way to add more diversity to comics. Now some of you may be saying, wait, Icon, Static Shock, and so on are from Milestone Comics? Then why is DC the one publishing their characters and the ones who gave Static Shock a TV show. Well, without getting into too much detail, the short answer is DC and Milestone have a deal which allows DC Comics to use their characters in the DC Universe. Which again is why we see Milestone, also known as the Codaverse characters, as part of the DC Universe. Hence Static Shock getting his own title in the New 52 and appearing as part of the DC Animated Universe. We also see Icon appear in Young Justice, which is awesome might I add. And we're even getting a static action figure soon from DC Collectibles, which I'm beyond excited to get my hands on. Now I can only hope they make an Icon action figure in a future wave. Now with that little backstory story of Milestone Media and why their characters are now part of the DC Universe out of the way, let's start talking about one of the best things that come from Milestone, Icon. As I said earlier, he first appeared in Icon Issue 1 in 1993, which was written by the late great Dwayne McDuffie and drawn by M.D. Bright. In the year 1839, an alien named Arnis from the Terminant alien race crash landed on Earth. The ship he was on malfunctioned and was going down, so he got in a life pod which shot him to the middle of a cotton field in the American South. And this is where it gets crazy, friends. Once the pod crash landed, it automatically changed the appearance of Arnis to be more like the closest sentient life form around him, who just so happened to be a slave woman named Miriam. She found Arnis in the middle of a cotton field who now looks like a cute little baby. She took him in and raised him as her own. As you would assume, he grew up to love his mother Miriam. And posing as a human, he of course learned the local language, but unfortunately, since this was the 1800s, he was put into slavery because of the color of his skin. Which is extremely sad. I can't even begin to imagine how horrible that would be. Eventually, however, he discovered that he had superpowers. And being the good guy that he is, he used his powers to secretly lighten the workload for his fellow slaves. He also helped in the resistance movement for freeing the slaves, known as the Underground Railroad, which is just really cool. I like how they threw in the real world aspect of the Underground Railroad into its fictional origin. Just adds a lot more to the character, I think. Arnis found himself fighting against slavery while waiting for Earth's technology to catch up to his own, which would allow him to fix his life pod. Eventually, slavery was eliminated. And because of this, he took the last name Freeman for obvious reasons. Since he has a mutated terminant body, he ages extremely slower than normal human beings, giving him incredible longevity. He kept this from the public by taking the identity of his son throughout the years. Following the Civil War, which he fought in against slavery, he attended Fist University. While there, he studied law and became a lawyer, which allowed him to support himself, but more importantly, get his life pod. During World War II, he fell in love with a woman by the name of Estelle Jackson, and they got married. But because of their genetics not matching, they were unfortunately not able to have kids because, you know, he's an alien and she's not. What's even more depressing is in 1977, Estelle died of cancer. He then left the Harlem Renaissance, which is where they lived, and moved to Dakota to get away from Harlem and all those awful memories of his wife passing away there. By the late 20th century, Arnis was going by the name Augustus Freeman IV, who was supposed to be the great-grandson of his original human identity. In the 20th century, Augustus is a very successful lawyer. His firm was one of the best in the entire country. He even became the personal lawyer for corporate leaders and pretty much just upper-class American society. He also kept his eye on a technology company who was getting closer to being able to fix his ship. One night, Augustus' house is broken into by a bunch of teens. He catches them, but one of the teens shoots him. But of course, it doesn't work because, well, he's invulnerable. So he uses his superpowers for the first time in years and catches the kids, telling them in true superhero fashion, if you want something, pay for it. If you can't afford it, work for it. Your behavior reflects poorly on our people and yourselves. You tell them, Icon. You don't steal people's things. That's just messed up. Well, technically, he wasn't Icon yet, but... I'm almost there, I'm like on the precipice. Anyway, he then threatens them to never steal again or they will have to deal with him. Then one night, a girl named Raquel, who was part of the teenage gang, comes to Augustus' house. She then showed him a picture she drew of the two of them in superhero costumes. She gave him the name Icon and her the name Rocket, his sidekick. He says, Icon, what's that? 
Raquel says it means like an example or an ideal. Then Augusta says actually it's a symbol, something that stands for something else. Long story short, he decides to go with it and become Icon so he can help people. And he even lets Raquel become his sidekick, the Rocket. And that's how Augustus became Icon, the Dakotaverse's main superhero. He's basically their Superman. Speaking of Superman, you might have noticed that his origin and whole mythology is kind of similar to Superman, as he's an alien who crash landed on Earth, then is found by a human and is raised by said human, and then ends up getting superpowers. And yes, obviously there's a ton of similarities, but he's a cool dynamic character nonetheless, with a lot of differences at the same time. Icon had a 42 issue solo series, and he hasn't had a self-titled series since, but he has made cameos in other comics. But now let's talk about Icon in the DC Universe. In the summer of 94, DC and Milestone Media joined together for a crossover series called Worlds Collide. Basically what happens is, a postal worker named Fred Benson becomes a portal between two worlds. He's a living link between Dakota, which is where the Milestone characters are from, and Metropolis, which of course, is where Superman's from. Eventually Benson can't control his powers and transforms into Rift, who's a cosmic being capable of manipulating and rearranging matter on a subatomic level. So of course this means the heroes from DC and Milestone have to come together to stop and seal this rift between their two worlds. Flash forward years later in 2008, it was announced that the Milestone universe and characters would be revived and merged into the DC universe proper. This happened due to complicated distribution and publication arrangements between the two companies. Don't really want to get into it, but all it means is they're now part of the DC universe. So in Justice League of America Volume 2 Issue 27, Icon and the Shadow Cabinet appeared in the New Worlds Collide story. The story explains how the Dakotaverse and the DC Universe combined into one. The being known as Dharma used energies that he harnessed from Rift to combine the two universes, which created a new continuity. But only Superman, Icon, and Dharma know that the two universes were once separated. Obviously, once the New 52 happened, things changed again, and we didn't really see many Dakotaverse or Milestone characters minus Static Shock. Although, we did see Icon make a cameo in issue 8 of the New 52 Static Shock series, which was also the last issue of that series. As for Icon being part of DC Rebirth, when, if, or how that will happen, I don't have the slightest idea. I know I've heard some talk about the Milestone characters, but who knows when that's going to happen. I don't think anything official has been confirmed, but I could be wrong, so take that with a grain of salt. But that, my friends, brings me to powers and abilities. Obviously, Icon has superhuman strength. When Icon's life pod altered his DNA so that he would look more like a human, it also had a side effect, which was the development of his now human-slash-alien genetic structure, meaning he was granted a crap ton of superhuman abilities that aren't normal for for even his alien race. His powers are very similar to that of a Kryptonian under the yellow sun. Icon can lift over a hundred tons with ease. He has near limitless strength up there with the likes of Superman, Shazam, Martian Manhunter, and so on. In the 2008 Worlds Collide story I mentioned earlier, he even punched Superman out of the Justice League Watchtower. Now I do have to say, we later find out that it was all a plan made to look convincing in front of the JLA and the Shadow Cabinet. Superman says, you think they bought it? To which Icon replies, I hope so. I went to considerable lengths to make it appear convincing. Superman then replies, you got a gift for understatement. That's as hard as I've ever been hit. How's your hand? And Icon says, it's already healed. So even though they were both in on it, it's still impressive nonetheless. Plus, Icon showed himself to be equal in strength to Superman before this in Icon issue 16. Icon is also incredibly fast. It's comparable to Superman's speed. He also has superhuman agility. He can move from place to place in the blink of an eye. Something unique to Icon is that he uses positron energy for different things, which grants him different abilities. But first, let me tell you what positron energy is. Positrons are the antiparticle or the antimatter counterpart of electrons. Ultimately, all you need to know is that it's strong energy that he uses to make concussion force beams, energy pulses, force fields, stun bolts, energy waves, which cause serious damage to anything they hit, energy enhanced punches, and energy constructs. That's right, Icon can create constructs out of positron energy. They should make him join the Green Lanterns. I'd read that story. And going through some more of his powers in rapid fire style, he has enhanced hearing, smell, vision, and taste. He has invulnerability, accelerated healing, and self-sustenance. Meaning he doesn't need to eat, drink, or sleep. And of course, he can fly. I'm sure he has more abilities, but I think you guys get the point. But now that I've told you so much about Icon, you might want to read some of his comics. So here are the ones I recommend. You have Icon, his self-titled series, issues 1 through 42, 1994 is Worlds Collide, 2008 Worlds Collide. Also, watch Young Justice, because he's in it from time to time, and it's great. 
If you've ever considered working behind the scenes to create video games, Full Sail University offers a variety of programs that can prepare you for a future in the industry. Whether you're interested in coding, art, producing, or mobile game development, there's a game degree program at Full Sail University that can teach you the tools, technology, and workflow used by today's studios. In the on-campus game art and game development undergraduate programs, you'll work with professional level game studios and labs, where you can work with teams of your peers and create games from start to finish. Full Sail University has offered game programs for more than a decade, and grads have worked on titles such as Destiny, the Call of Duty series, Far Cry 4, and many more. Full Sail students receive a laptop along with game industry software at a deep institutional discount. Full Sail University also offers a variety of campus and online degrees in fields related to the entertainment and media industry. Visit fullsail.edu forward slash variant to learn more. First up for Wednesday, September 9th, we have The Adventures of Archer and Armstrong, Issue 7. The hunt for Armstrong's estranged wife is taking a strange turn to some of the most bizarre circuses, and it's no laughing matter. Here we have Superman, Issue 6. The Eradicator faces off against Superman and Son in a battle that may save the day, but also destroy the moon. And finally, we have Batman, Issue 6. This is a standalone story where Batman tries to save Gotham Girl from going down a dangerous path. But can you save her, since she doesn't want to be saved? And that'll bring another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I will see you people next week when I talk about all things comics. Icon can lift over 100 tons with ease. He has near limitless strength up to up there with the likes of uh, Superman. The likes of uh, Soups. They fought several times. You know, they've, they've, they've bat their heads several times together. They're like, I'm Icon. He's like, I'm Superman. They're like, let's fight. And then they like became friends and it was weird, but now they're besties and that's pretty cool. <laughs>